Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of British vs. Americans Today with... I'm Lucy Moon! I'm Lucy Moon! <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to be talking a little bit about drug education in the UK versus the US. And uh, where did you grow up? What area? I grew up like halfway between London and Brighton, so I was... It's a big area. Yeah. You're a southerner. I'm a southerner. And I grew up on the east coast, so I feel like most everyone in America had the same drug education as long as they like were born in the 80s or 90s because we had the D.A.R.E. program. There was a whole program. You have a pro what do you mean? You, what do you mean? You, you have a program. Absolutely not. <laughs> How did you guys not do drugs? How did you resist? How did we not do drugs? I don't know. The UK definitely doesn't have any issues with drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's always a meme online that British people with drug use go so hard it's scary and people go like oh my god is that safe and they go i'm from england <laughs> yeah cool yes we, we had a program called the dare program which is the drug abuse resistance education you know we had a lion a lion i, I want to show you a picture of the lion when you graduated dare you got a little stuffed dare lion and um, when you graduate you get a man lion. dressed up in a giant lion suit hugging you when people have mascots in us mm -hmm. like culture is that just like your teacher dressed up as the mascot or do they have someone hired in to dress up as a mascot? It was probably a police officer. Okay. The thing about the D.A.R.E. program was, as far as I remember, like they lightly educated us in all of elementary school, but in fifth grade is where it like kind of really stepped up. We had a cop visit the classroom like a couple times. Wait, how old's fifth grade? Year five. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so like a time when you, you, you aren't thinking of drugs, you're just thinking, thinking want to play some games. I've got parents who potentially have alcohol and drug problems. Surely that's your only context. The lessons were about making good choices, so they'd tell us about the drugs and tell us how each one individually can ruin your life. Okay, we had something kind of similar. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this was widespread or if this was just a Kent police thing. We had a policeman come in a couple of times What's while we Kent were- What's a Kent police? Kent, sorry. I, oh, I Kent police. Kent. So in Kent, a police officer came in maybe three times during our last year of school mm -hmm. or last two years of school to talk about- You mean in secondary? No, in primary. Oh, okay. So I was so like 10 sixth, or 11. Yeah, sixth grade, about fifth yeah. grade. And he came in to talk about, one, not going on rail tracks, uh, which is, because all of the <laughs> I guess that's not a thing in the States, because we don't have <laughs> <Yeah>. many. <laughs> and the drugs awareness one, the police officer came in and was like, I'm basically trying to present himself as like, I'm going to be your friend. Of course. Um, this is really chilled out. You know, if you're going to do drugs in the future when you're teenagers, you're going to do drugs. However, I'm going to tell you what what happens and he told us all this terrifying stuff like okay. about especially about acid trips but he said if you do drugs that seems yeah because he was trying ours was to like, like you won't do kids. drugs ours was like if you touch them these things are likely to happen to you was the idea i feel like the reason that people have such bad times on drugs these days is because they're paranoid because the stuff they were lied to as kids so like one of the things we were told about is like Literally, I can't believe they were allowed to do this in schools. They told us a story about a guy who took acid and he uh, peeled himself like an orange. Um, what? And we, we were told about another guy who took acid. I, th I think it was all acid based, which is even weirder. And he thought he had loads of spiders under his skin. So he was like um, trying to like peel his skin off to try and like get get rid of the spiders. That's These weird because all, all of the drugs, that's one of the safest hospital. one in terms of yeah, addiction this is why and everything it was else. Weird. Oh my god, though, it scared me off hallucinogenics. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> That's terrifying. So ours also decided to go for the hallucinogenics route because in eighth grade, you have like an extra strong dare program where they would basically have these convicts come in in their orange jumpsuits and chains and they'd stand on the stage what? and they would basically be like, I did this and I killed people and now I'm in jail and you will be the same if you do drugs. And I remember they had these incredibly graphic pictures on the projector screen of people whose heads had been like completely bashed in from falling from three stories because, oh, I took acid and thought I could fly. And it was yeah, just- Yeah, we got the, thought you could fly one. I just remember in that auditorium, multiple girls from aisles would just start crying and just leave the auditorium because it was that graphic. How is this the method of teaching? Oh, at the, at the end of it, by the way, we then were allowed to row by row, go up to the front and look at all the drugs. Be like, here's MDMA, you know, here's a little 2CB. What? And you get to see them all and you see the little baggies and then he's like, no, don't do that or you'll die. And that was, yeah, that was it. That was that good is, stuff. And that was eighth grade, so you were 13? Awesome. Yeah, it was about 13 and it was so we were a bit more mature But I still at that point had never even heard of outside of dare kids doing drugs I didn't even know weed was a thing until I was like in 11th grade and I was still like oh no But so our program's education was the just say no no matter what and they always had situations that the kids and the examples were in that aren't realistic like 
oh, so you're walking down the street with your friends and a guy's like, hey, wanna do weed? That doesn't, usually it's you just hanging out at a party with friends you know and your friend's like, hey, do you wanna join me? What's the situation with that? I never learned. I, you're supposed to go, no. In the UK, I don't ever remember being told about people going to jail. But mm -hmm. then that could have also been because, what? as far as I'm aware, like, racially, I'm not really represented. Yeah. As, like, and gender-wise as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe I went to an all-girls school when I was in secondary oh. school. I so, do recall having to write an essay, my Dare Reflections essay, on how I'm going to make sure I live my life and not do drugs. And I remember having to do an art project in which I drew some anti-drug thing. And I remember doing like a line through all the drugs to be like, That's I won't so do this. Weird. And then I had to sign a contract. I remember in fifth grade saying I won't do drugs. So that's the whole reason, you what? know, I, I can't do them now. It's annoying, but they made me sign a contract. <laughs> you, that is, I just, do you know what worked. though? I bet you on some level that was either really effective or really ineffective. There will be people who are still to this day too scared <laughs> to go near them. And people who then find it really fun and experimental because they were told it was so scary. They realize one isn't that scary. And then they yeah. go further in and further in. I think that's the biggest issue was the campaign for D.A.R.E. in the States was so much of a don't do any of them, they're all bad, they'll all kill you, that once you try one that doesn't kill you, you think, oh, what about the other ones? I bet they're fine, then do heroin. But they did multiple studies on the D.A.R.E. program specifically and found that on average, kids that were shown the D.A.R.E. program were more likely to do drugs than kids who did it. Well, so that's how awareness. ineffective it was. Because yes, it is. What, like, at, at a time when you don't know about it. These kids are being told by adults, like, you shouldn't do it because I said so. That was the worst thing my dad could say, except like, stop crying unless I give you a reason to cry about. But besides that, like, except because I, I said bowling. so. <laughs> yeah, except I liked bowling. I didn't, I hated bowling. My yeah, this is just not true. My parents were professionals. <laughs> I remember though, there were people in my year who would experiment with drugs and it was actually really, really? open and <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, Jenny, I didn't know I think I knew one kid that people called a stoner in high school, but I genuinely... Oh, people, weed was nothing. People were smoking weed from like 14, 15. That it was, unlike in school. Mm -hmm. I say in school, like on the school grounds. Oh, okay. <laughs> people like were just like, in the yeah, corner, yeah. sure, sure, sure. But people were playing with all sorts of drugs because we had this thing that in the UK at least was quite popular called Silk Road. Do you know about Silk Road? You mean Silk Road, the, the dark net marketplace? Yeah. So when we were 14 and 15, people were... And really? Yeah, people were going online. Because how, how did they even... It's cheap. And accessible to kids, you can accessible. get them. Accessible? How are these kids like CD getting... cases. Yeah, but I just don't understand how kids are savvy enough to, to use the dark net and also not get arrested. I don't know how everyone managed, but people really I can't believe that. That's insane. But they, I remember there was this huge trend for um, MCAT. I've heard is, about that. I can't remember what's methadrone. I feel like there's so many laws in the UK because of this whole student problem. When someone's talking about a certain drug, I'll hear like a British friend be like, oh yeah, so there's university drugs such as Ket. No, uh, the legal highs is what you guys had so much of in we, the UK. Oh my God, we had so much. Like I remember buying poppers age 30. That was like, one that you got. And I was like, what's a yeah. popper? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> what is Talk to Frank exactly? Um, that's, Who is Frank? So when all of this stuff was happening where like Silk Road was getting shut down, an organization started, oh, I guess, by the government, funded mm -hmm. by the government a couple of years before called Talk to Frank. And Talk to Frank is an information hub about drugs. And I think they try to approach the, the tone as being quite conversational, but quite educational mm -hmm. and obviously leaning towards heavily leaning prevention. towards do not do this and yes. prevention. Yeah. So there was this database where you could go and look up drugs and find out oh. more about their effects. So if you had questions, that's a, a place that at least the government knew. If you go here, we can yeah. be like, don't do them, as well as the information. Yeah, exactly. So obviously, if you've got friends who are taking a certain drug and it's one of these weird chemical drugs, which mm -hmm. were quite available, at least where I was at the time, you, instead of just going, oh, maybe I have to try some to work out what it's like, at yeah. least you could go online and read about it and learn from like people. And there were also loads of forums you could go on. Because the thing is, if people are being told, don't do it, they're then going to be more interested in doing it unless you give them real information. I think the issue we had so much with the D.A.R.E. program was that it didn't treat kids as intelligent and logical beings and treated them as kids that will just listen to what you say, which is yeah. the opposite. So no, 100%. But then they hit me at a really good time with that drugs awareness thing that I had when I was 11. I will Perfect never time. touch hallucinogenics. I never have, I never really? will. I will not go near them because the I don't know why they just instilled fear even though it's, I know it's like illogical. Uh, yeah, the one positive thing that I think Dare did to me was it genuinely made me fear drug misuse. Yeah. I remember having to write an essay on the difference between misuse and abuse and misuse is oh, you have funny. like back pain and you're like, oh, my mom has a prescription for pain and so you take someone else's prescription. 
So and they so did now, educate you about that. Oh yes, but I'm I'm now terrified. Like I went to my friend's house the other day, I had back pain. Her mom was like, "Here you go, use this." And I was like, "I don't want to die, ma'am," because <laughs> I was told like, you know, you could be a normal person that doesn't do any drugs, but then you do, you know, a prescription one that's not yours, and it messes with your body and you die. And I was like, "Ah." In a way, that's a good. It is angle. I still only take one acetaminophen, never two. I don't know what that is. Tylenol, uh, ibuprofen. Oh, okay. Paracetamol. Paracetamol. I only take one pill. People really? are like, you can take two, and I'm like. Ma'am, please don't be a pusher. So I have this friend that grew up in Ohio and he was telling me that in his high school, it was genuinely commonplace. People would go into the bathroom and do opioids. It was such a thing. See that. And that sounds terrifying. I can't. Power search. <laughs> I, of all the places, school, but also, ah, oh, that's so sad because these kids are getting hooked because, you know, the prescriptions and the opioids are just all over the US. It's such yeah. a problem. I have this really distinct memory of being, for some reason, in our PE gym, mm -hmm. which, why were we there? Who knows? Um, You're all purpose right? And I think it was a policeman that came in then as well. We were about 14 and it was my year group uh -huh. and he made us put our hand up if we'd ever taken drugs. Oh, whoa. People raise their hands. Raise your hand if you ever but get them, boys. People Arrest them. No, people what? honestly thought it was funny. They were like, this is so stupid. Well, everyone should have risen Why? their hands for because like Tylenol everyone, and stuff. Yeah, well, yeah. So then, then they did the whole like, you've all taken drugs. But it was so interesting. Like they had hands up whoever's drunk alcohol, hands up whoever's done drugs. And then I guess they did some kind of educational program around it. Like a day. Don't be like John. Who has so, time like, for drugs when there's so many tests to study for in the UK, you know? <laughs> all those GCSEs and you got time to do a little weed. What are you doing? Is this where one of your little... Um, yeah, the card thing, comes the up. Card comes I up. took a GCSE. <laughs> I never thought anyone did anything. And then I remember going to like a party uh, two years ago or so, and I went up to someone's bedroom and I was like, why is everyone looking at this shoebox? Oh. And I just remember going like, I didn't, what? And that's the situation you're in. It's not like a random stranger on the street. It's you're at a friend's house at a party and you're like, oh. Yeah. Okay. But no, wait, was, was there a Frank mascot? No, God no. I remember weed just being advertised as like advertised. Advertised? <laughs> Smoke weed today. Yeah. I remember weed just being portrayed as the thing that makes you lazy, you achieve nothing, and you don't move off your sofa. We had ads that like that. The... They'd show like two dudes smoking and going like, people say weed's gonna like ruin your life, but like we've been smoking for like 25 years. Nothing's happened to us. And then you hear someone's voice and he goes like, sorry, mom. And he like puts it out. No and way. It was like, oh, and it was like a subtle way of being like, you. But that's a real thing. They Pe made sometimes people abuse one. it where they smoke it so much they don't do anything. I was always terrified to get addicted to any substance. So like tobacco terrifies me because I just don't want to touch it. I've never Maybe touched tobacco. Maybe your drugs education did have good elements. I don't know. I think, it, I yeah. think making people fear addiction is probably quite a good thing. Yeah, but it, that made it so that if things weren't addictive, I'm like, cool. I'll do yeah. a line of Tylenol. Melatonin. In <laughs> because it's still in my head, I feel like I should sing to you the song that I had to sing on graduation of Dare Program. How old were you when you had to sing it? I think I was like 10. I'm gonna beat the odds. I won't give up, I won't give in. I'm gonna call the shots in my life and I'm gonna win. Don't push me, don't press me, don't call me friend when all I want, all you're gonna do is drag me down. I want for this to end. Check your attitude at the door. I do not want to score. I'm going to be the winner in this drug war. We sang about the drug war. <laughs> that was mind blowing. That was the solo I had, I remember. I got the special group because I could talk fast. Wait, so there was more. Oh, yeah. D, I won't do drugs. A, won't have an attitude. R, I will respect myself. E, I will educate me now. I will dare. Yeah. I'm still in my head. Right? Yeah. Every time oh, someone God. offers me a weed on the street, I'm always like, listen, check your attitude at the door. Check your attitude at the door. That's so American. They, I think they tried Imagine to make it hip hop -y, so they'd be like, yo, kids, uh, the lion's here to knock the drugs. Yeah. I don't know if it worked. I watched a video. <laughs> drugs. We didn't have so you didn't songs. Sing? No. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do any of this. It wouldn't oh. have worked. Oh, I mean, weed can wait. Nah. <laughs> I think education is the most important part and I think you can't stop people from taking drugs but you can help make sure that they're safe. And make informed decisions. So and basically let people make informed decisions. And also I think you were talking about earlier, the UK has a program called The Loop. Yeah, so it's um, a non-profit I think called The Loop, yeah. And you can follow it on Instagram. It, they're like a drugs testing and awareness 
organization and you can get your drugs tested by them at certain festivals i know that's available in amsterdam as well mm -hmm. and like in the i mean alcohol is also an issue i feel like we need more education oh about. my god we need more education on alcohol because i think i mean alcohol kills more people than all these drugs combined oh god except yeah. opioids probably but yeah no it's, it's really really dangerous and like and caffeine is also a drug a lot of people are dependent on caffeine is it gives you bad <laughs> headaches i would know really yeah oh yeah i get headaches if i don't drink i i only have one coffee a day but if I don't have that one coffee, I get a headache. Really? Anyway, drug education. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I mean, give me a big thumbs up. Uh, tell us if you're from a different country or the UK, US. If you had a different experience, I'd love to hear what you got to say. Other than that, I guess you can watch some of these other videos that I made. They're pretty good. Lucy, do you have a Are video you want to shout right out? Now? Yeah, they're everywhere. Whoa. Um, what would I like to shout out? I made in 160 hours. I do really cool weekly vlogs and that's great. I love them. I think you'll like them too. Check it out. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. It is very freaking hot.